in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown has been a friend of mine for how many years now, Larry? Since 1983, so that would be 41 years. Wow, wow, I've known you that long? Yeah, I did your first, uh, the yeah. first time you had me on the radio was January of 83. Well, I think it's time for us to just not be friends anymore. How do you like that? <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is it. That is uh, frightening. That's so like uh, what forty. Uh, Forty-one, 41 years, years, you know. And I, I knew my friend Shecky for f- at least forty-five. So you know, I mean, it, it, when Shecky went, I, I it devastated me because I knew him for so long. So stay alive. I, I didn't even know him, and I was devastated. He sounded like such a great guy. You stay away. Stay around here, okay? Don't leave. Don't leave I'm me. Trying. I, I'm trying. So to where th- did you meet? Where did you meet Shecky? I'm. I was a gift. <laughs> I had. There was a guy I knew. His name was Steve Weiner. Worked. Uh, he worked. Uh, where did he work? Well, he actually worked at the Letterman Show. Uh, he was the first year of the Letterman Show, and then he got fired. And. Um, I think, but Shecky wasn't working at the Letterman show at that time, so I knew him before. Oh, yes, he had turned out a film that I liked called King of the Z's, which was a parody on a documentary about a mythical movie studio that was the cheapest movie studio of all time. You know, like they did a film of Hamlet with ducks, you know, (laughs) uh, things like that. A very funny film, and that's what got them hired over at Letterman. But he had done that film, and I loved that film, and we became friends, Steve Weiner and I. Now, he had this friend named Rick Sheckman, and he, this is before Rick Sheckman was Shecky, okay? And he, um, he, 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 he was a good friends with, with Rick, and so as a birthday present for Rick, who was a fan of my show, my radio show, he decided to invite him to lunch and asked that I maybe make an appearance as a cheap thrill for Shecky. So that's what happened. I was a gift. Wow. I was a, the cheapest birthday gift ever given. And uh, 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 we started becoming friends at that point. And I became bigger friends with Shecky than I ever did with Steve, although Steve's still a friend of mine. Um but uh, he, uh, it was really, it was something, really something. And that's how I met him. And, uh, and he turned out to be one of the longest employees of the Letterman history, right? Yeah, short of six months of, he started at the Late Show on NBC. Uh, he did that, I think, within six months of it starting. Uh, in fact, uh, Steve got him that job. Uh, he said, "We I got a great guy who could be a great film coordinator for this show. And uh, they hired him on, and he started getting them all these incredible clips. And they loved him and, and kept him. And he then, he never became anything beyond film coordinator. Although, technically, if they were to give him a title other than that for realistically what he did, they would have listed him as one of the producers. Um, because he had gotten that influential in the whole process. But he always wanted to be kept listed on the credits as film coordinator. So uh, that was his that was his title for for all of the shows between six months into the late show. At the end, he was, I think, the third longest employee of uh, Worldwide Pants. You know, so... And did he interact with Letterman at all? Oh, yeah, 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 quite a few. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he, you know, Dave never went around and said, Hi, Shecky, how you doing today? You know, yeah. that wasn't Letterman, <laughs> okay? 
But, I mean, he had an ongoing relationship with Sheck, with uh, Letterman because guess who named him Shecky? Uh, probably Le- Letterman. Letterman. That, he had, had fun names for everybody, and, you know, um, his for, uh, for, for um, uh, Rick was, uh, was uh, Shecky. So the guy I knew as Rick morphed into Shecky, courtesy of David Letterman. Well, and and yeah. he, he made a lot of appearances on the show. I mean, he played Elvis on the show. He did all. Yeah, kinds I remember of that things. one. Yeah, but he, he did all kinds of things. You know, uh, it was it was because his delivery was almost a lack of uh, of any kind of charisma. Exactly. Yeah, it was That's kind hilarious. Of, <laughs> right, Dave. I'm happy to be here, Dave. Even when he did Elvis, he read it so badly that it was funny. Uh-huh. You know, and and Dave loved that. He loved people who had a character within themselves. Um, Larry Bud Melman is an example. Um, Calvert DeForest. Do you know? Do you know who you know? Calvert DeForest played Larry Bud Melman. You remember Larry Bud Melman? Don't right. You? He was very, very odd and funny. Do you know who he was the nephew of? No Lee, Lee DeForest, the guy who invented the vacuum tube. That made oh. it possible for us to have amplified audio. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, but uh, well, that's uh, February. That's uh, so. This month is the forty-second anniversary of the Letterman Show. Really? He started in February of eighty-two. Is, you mean the Night Show? Yeah. Because there was a Day Show. You know, a year there earlier. There was a Day Show. It was really. Very funny, but it didn't last very long. It was a great that show. afternoon show. Yeah, I went and saw that show. I have tapes of that show, and it's very funny. You know, very funny. Uh, but it was just too, it was too hip, it was too hip for the audience, you know. He replaced three game shows. That's That's the kind of time slot they gave him. So when he went to late night, that was the perfect time to put Letterman on because that's where his audience was, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, students, people who didn't sleep at night, you know, whatever. That was his audience. Uh, and um, he he got a rather large audience uh, catering to them because nobody had been catering to them. Before that was Tom Snyder, and that was a good show. You know, in fact, I was on that show once. Uh, and Snyder, uh, Snyder was a pretty good interviewer, I think. Not a great interviewer. Oh, I like him a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but the show wasn't wasn't too hip for the room. It was under hip for the room. Okay, so when Letterman came on, it was refreshing. A story that people never talk about, and then I heard this one from Shaggy. When Letterman replaced Snyder, so obviously when Letterman went in to NBC and got an office there. The office they gave him was Snyder's. And when uh, he walked into the room, Snyder had either written a note or written it on the walls because he figured they were going to paint the walls anyway, right? And it was a note to David Letterman. Please enjoy this office as much as I have much success wow that was really nice you know yeah. he could have just said fuck you you're replacing me <laughs> you know <laughs> i hope you die <laughs> yeah i hope you hope you <laughs> die on your on your own vomit you know <laughs> but uh uh anyway so anyway that, that was uh that that's a little little piece of trivia from the letterman show a lot of people don't know uh know and that's why that's why in later years letterman put him on right after him when he was at CBS. Yeah. Because he he remembered that, and he remembered what a fine guy Snyder was to him. And he also liked what Snyder did. In fact, for years, you know, Snyder was over at, I think it was MSNBC, or I can't remember all the places he was, but he, he what he would do is he would take phone calls on his show. It was kind of a radio show it went out as a radio show as well as a television show. And Letterman loved it. So he would call and get on the air and play all these different characters. And for a long time, Snyder 
didn't even know it was David Letterman. Really? Yeah, yeah. So in the end, uh, he he felt a certain love for Tom Snyder and said, "Come on over here. I got to put on a show after me, and you would be the best possible person to do it." And that's what became the Late Late Show with Tom Snyder. So, yeah, little, little stories. Okay. What I liked about the Snyder show, it was the opposite of you. He did not have an audience. And for some reason, I felt when you watched Snyder, was, he almost felt like he was in the living room talking to you. Well, Snyder had this wonderful quality, uh, if you go back and watch him, that he, when he talked to you, talked to the audience, he looked straight into that camera and talked to you. A lot of people will look, if you look at Johnny Carson, they say the reason Johnny Carson was such an enigma is if he, you watch his TV show, he comes out to, from the curtain, starts doing his monologue, he never looks straight ahead at the camera. He looks to one side, then he looks to another side. He's playing to the audience in the theater, okay? Snyder never did that. Snyder played directly to the camera, and uh, Carson never played directly to the camera. So that was that was Snyder's biggie, in my opinion. I always liked that about him. But. Yeah, and he uh, he uh, his last uh, place of uh, residence was uh, Tiburon. Was it really? Yeah, and he actually he dropped by the Throckmorton one night. So. Oh, I thought you meant that's where he died. <laughs> he said he dropped. Well, I think he by, did. Yeah, by the Throck, Throckmorton. He lived, no, <laughs> he lived in Tiburon. No, that's where I've died many nights. But uh, well, he retired from that show at CBS. He decided he retired, he, and I guess lived. In, so he must have done well to live in Tiburon. Oh, so. well, he did. Yeah, I think he did okay. I think uh, many years at NBC, and that that's how he made his big bucks. You know, terrific. But anyway, so that that's a, that's some of the little stories about Dave and and uh, uh, Tom Snyder. So how are you doing, my friend? How, how? Uh, I'm surviving. I'm uh, thinking more and more about the uh, more. As you get older, you can't help but think about the mortalities. <laughs> well, you see, you and I both fear death. Yeah, yeah. That's why we are the way we are. And so when we start talking, it eventually always comes up. You know, I was just no, thinking. Well, Letterman mentioned that recently. He said at seventy-five, he said you have to think about it. Which is I wake up every do. morning thinking about it. You know, because I'm not, I'm not what I used to be. I can't. I'm not. I don't walk as well as I used to. You know, things like that. You know, and then I go, okay, so I want to live to be a hundred. Okay, what's I'm, what's it going to be like when I'm a hundred? It, it's got to be. You, you almost probably welcome death. You know. Yeah. How many how many celebrities have lived to be a hundred? I mean, Carl Reiner was famously quoted as saying, "Every morning, the first thing he does is he opens up the paper, looks at the obituaries, and if his name isn't there, he then goes <laughs> on with his day." You know. Um, but well, I think he I think he made ninety nine, didn't he? he? May have made a hundred, but uh -huh. he made he made ninety nine. That I know. Yeah, and now Mel Brooks, his best friend, is getting. To that point, it's wait, close. Yeah. Wait a minute, Echo. How old? Echo. This is not responding to me. Echo. How old is Mel Brooks? Mel Brooks is ninety-seven years old. Ninety-seven years old. So, uh, pretty old. I, you know, you may live a long life because you're a comedian. Comedians sometimes the comedians either die young or they die old, really old. <laughs> Well, two have lived to be a hundred: uh, Bob Hope and uh, George Burns. George Burns, right? Yep, absolutely. And uh, who just died? That was, I think he was ninety-seven. Was Shecky Green? Really? Who I, who I thought had died years ago. <laughs> you know, there are those people that when they die, they go, "You go, he's still alive, or was still alive." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just because you never hear from them for years, you know. Um, but uh, you have a, a, and the people who, some of the people who live the longest are actually actors. 
I mean, you had, uh, I'm trying to... Yeah, you were mentioning that guy that was in that Hitchcock movie, that was like 107. F- I think. F- was pushed off of the, uh, yeah, fell off of the uh, Statue of Liberty. I'm trying to remember his name right now, because my mind's a blank, see? And then uh, then you had Olivia de Havilland, she was eight, she was 104, I think, when she died. Wow. Yeah, yeah. All of these people weren't getting insurance from my union. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, but yes, our uh, wonderful union screwed us over. Yeah, it really screwed us over. Really screwed us over. Um, to where now I'm having to, you know, get my insurance. Uh, I pay a lot of money for health insurance now. I pay. I'm paying. Going to be paying. Marjorie's office was paying for, but it's, it's through in uh, April, and she. Uh, uh, we were we were pay, they were paying for each of us a hundred and twenty dollars three hundred and twenty dollars a month for supplemental to our Medicare. So you know that's but thank you Union for making it that much. It used to be two thousand dollars a year for the two of us when we were with the Union. So anyway, you know, and plus we had great dental as well. And since I'm getting old and toothless, uh, I need all the dental I can get, you know. Aren't you getting an implant? Uh, I got the implant. Wow. How's it work? Uh, fine. You know, uh, the best kind of implants are implants you don't even notice you have. Sometimes I have to go back and figure out where they are. I have four of them. Let's really? See. Yeah. Wow. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the one I just got is in front of uh, one that I got before so you know but so far they all have worked pretty well you know uh, you don't hear about them particularly going bad although when they go bad they go bad and I think they just put in a new one that's all so and your insurance covered that uh, it, it, it covered part of it part of it you know they those but, implants are expensive yeah, like five grand. Or well, something. why the government, for instance, with Medicare doesn't give you dental is beyond me. Because when you reach 80, 85, your teeth are going to hell, you know. And you could use yeah, the insurance acts like uh, they act like dental is not a health problem. It's insane. Yeah, they they, uh, they do not include any kind of dental pro, uh, coverage. There are things called Advantage, which are insurance companies that take over for Medicare. And you're no longer getting paid by Medicare. Uh, you're getting paid by these health insurance companies. And they offer plans that have, they say, and we have uh, dental coverage. Well, the dental coverage is two cleanings a year. That's it. You know, you don't get anything else. The rest of it is, uh, uh, you know. So, so uh, really, dental is probably more expensive even than medical at this point. It's getting ridiculous. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you want to get an implant over a bridge because bridges you have to take out and clean them. and uh, Not a bridge, but a, a, a denture, let's say. Uh, you have to you have to clean them and do all of that. But if you got yourself, uh, uh, you know, you, if, if you have to have your whole, all your bottom teeth taken out and put a, a denture in there, they can take that, they can put the, the, the bolts in your mouth and then they can get the whole a whole denture and place it in there, and really, it's like you've got your own teeth back. But that's very, very, very expensive. I think that could cost you about twenty, thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You know, government doesn't take care of it. So, and dental insurance—that's bullshit. Dental insurance—you get dental insurance, you pay for it. There's a deductible. First of all, and then they only give you fifteen hundred dollars a year. Well, in a dentist's office, you can eat that up just, you know, in deep the root crown, cleaning. So. Yeah, it, it crowns. Yeah, a crown will cost you uh, actually more probably than your insurance will cover. So you're always winding up putting uh, money out of your pocket. I had to put. I have insurance, but I've so uh, so far I haven't gotten the bill yet. But I'm sure I. I owe my dentist uh, um, oh about two three thousand dollars, so you know those things should be taken care of by the government too. Everything should be taken care of the government. I it just bothers me that Medicare is only eighty percent, right? 
and you got to come up with the other 20%. Yeah, and that 20% can easily bankrupt most people. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm paying $320 a month, all right? Now, that shouldn't be. I mean, what kind of country do we have where we don't care if people die because they don't have the money to have good medical care? That's that's cruel. It's terrible. God, we're a, God, we're a horrible country. <laughs> you feel backwards in many ways. That's for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. But your health's okay. I mean, how you did you do so the, far? Yeah. Did you do the eyes yet? Uh, no, I'm waiting for a reschedule on that and the hernia. The, uh, the hernia. Yeah. I'm falling apart. I, I, I had a doctor see me, and he looked at the hernia and he said yeah it's bulging he said but if it doesn't hurt and you can poke it back in you're fine yeah you know they don't they, they, if your doctor wants to do it it's probably not because he wants to make the money but because he thinks you need it because most doctors I'm sure your doctor even with that hernia said let's wait and see you know mm -hmm. until it gets uncomfortable let's not do anything about it because it, yeah, it's not a simple operation you know. No, it's uh, not a good, not an easy recovery. So. Although we used to make jokes about hernia operations, didn't we? <laughs> As you get old, you don't make jokes about hernia operations. But no, all the things we joked about come back to haunt us. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, it, 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 it uh, you know. Uh, but the, you should, you should get the eyes done. That's a simple thing. Don't even worry. Yeah, about it. I heard that's really. Yeah, you told me that it's really simple. But. Yeah, it's it's a it's a breeze to walk in the park. It's just you know it's it's like everything else. It's annoying. I mean, you're sitting there and they're, they're literally po cutting into your eye and taking a lens out and putting a new one in. But you know, people will go, the Lord protects us. God willing, the Lord will take care of things. Blah blah blah. blah. You know that bullshit. Yeah. Well, if the Lord were that good, why is it man can put a better lens in your eye than you got from God? <laughs> Lord dropped the ball. <laughs> oh, he dropped the ball on that one. He dropped the ball on the <laughs> prostate. You know, hey, I think I'll build the prostate. That will take and put out the uh, the fluid with which the uh, sperm, which is made in your balls, uh, can go and whatever right uh, terrible design y yeah but but i'll i'll just, where where can i put it well i'll put I'll, I'll put something through it so that we can run the urethra right through this thing that's a good idea yeah that's superb yeah. engineering the only thing is yeah, when you get uh, old and, <laughs> and and the prostate enlarges it clamps down on your urethra and that's why guys get up in the middle of the night four times five times ten times to dribble out what they can dribble out thank you god you really designed a great body here that's a worse design than ford you know <laughs> yes worse than the edsel All right. <laughs> uh you remember the edsel Boy, uh, I remember my parents talking. My parents talking about it. They always used to laugh that the grill looked like a toilet seat. Well, that that is not what the grill was meant to look like at the time. S. I. Hayakawa. You remember the name? I do. Yeah, he became a chancellor at San Francisco State University. I think he also uh -huh. became politician. But S. I. Hayakawa came out with a treatise on the sexual symbolism of the American automobile. And somebody at Ford read that and decided, yes, people buy cars because there's something in it that has sexual symbolism that they can relate to, uh, and uh, let's, uh, let's build a car, and in the front, let's build something that looks like a vagina. Really? I never heard that. Yes, it was meant to look like a vagina. <laughs> and they wow. thought people would be running to these cars to buy them, or at least men. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't know, unless you wanted to have sex with the grill of your car, you know, it wasn't very practical. But that's what it was meant to be. I mean, what, is it, what did it look like? Yeah, the toilet seat. Well, toilet seat, but uh, toilet seats aren't that shape. They're rounder. What looks like that? I guess the VJ. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching. 
last night I was watching uh, a thing with Bobby Slayton at one of these stand-up shows that he had done called Born to be Bobby. And he has the line that when God made the vagina, he should have put in a, he should have put in a, 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 what do you call it? A, a change machine, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know where you click it and the, the quarters come out and so on and so forth. Should have built that right in because that's a real money maker. He says. In yeah, fact, don't you ever notice? Hilarious. You ever notice that the vagina looks like you could take a credit card and swipe it in like at an ATM? <laughs> Classic. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, hey, listen. Oh, whoa, we're running out of time here. It we go, are. goes fast with you, Bubs. It really does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It's, not, it's something I look forward to. I hope you do, too. Well, don't forget the Edsel was a big uh, failure. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a big failure. Nobody wanted a car with a vagina. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Say goodnight, Larry. See you next week. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, thank you very much, Larry. And we'll do it again with you next week. And, uh, uh, yeah, so, anyway, I'm just constantly removing somebody here who thinks he's going to get on, but he's not going to get on. But I did. Uh, you know what happened? Um, I, uh, there was this uh, a n name that I, I've seen come up and I've been very suspicious of, and uh, I, I didn't want to let him on. So what I did, which was co really cool, is while you people were listening to Bubbles, I put him on. I let him on Zoom. And then when I saw who he was, I made sure, sure he, I don't let him back in. He keeps trying again. He's, he's, I, the guy has a waste of time because he's not going to get on. That's all there is to it. But there are some people who are going to get on. There are two of them right now. Uh, and one of them is... Uh, is uh, um, um, uh, who do you call it? Uh, uh, Jeffrey Stein, and the other one is who do you call it? No, uh, Br uh, Brian Neary. Hello, Brian. How are you? Brian, are you there? As a waste of time. I'm trying uh, to listen to you because you cut to us, and I'm missing your story. Some people. You, oh, oh, yeah. oh uh, uh, Jeff, did he kill it? He did kill it. Oh, good. No, that was me. I was trying to listen to the rest of your story about the guy that you put on while we're waiting for you to come on. Right, right. Well, anyway, I, I uh, let me see here. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, are you there? Are you it's okay. there? Okay, he'll get there. So yeah. I didn't. I, I don't want to talk about cars because there's some people in the chat who get upset when we talk about cars. But I didn't believe you about the vagina thing. And I Googled it, and it said cultural critics speculated that the car was a flop because the vertical grill looked like a vagina. So I was right. You were right. I, I never heard that story before. Well, were you around when the Edsel uh, came into being? No, that was 1958 or something. Okay, so you you so I you don't trust me on something that happened within my. I lifetime? know that Edsel guys have made nice, beautiful wait, customs wait, wait, out of wait, them because they're on so a ugly. Second. I gotta put I zoom on. There we go. Okay, I was I wasn't doing it there. I was a little screwed up here. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. yeah. So I I know the car. I I they. Some beautiful customs have been made out of them and stuff like that nowadays. But yeah, I, I never knew the the whole vagina story. I, I never found it a particular. Uh, I never was against it uh, uh, particularly, <laughs> but it was not a. Uh, um, uh, how can I put it? It was not the a, a aesthetically. I, 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 I didn't find it unesthetically pleasing. In fact, when it came out, I remember going. You know what they happens to the? Uh, wait a minute! I got to get rid of this guy. Right, now, that's, the guy, that's, the guy, that's, a, that's the guy. No, I'm and, talking. Uh, I'm not no. zoom bombing. I found you on YouTube, and I'm just trying to join. To Don't make go away. Go away. Just I'm not sorry, going away. Well, you're going to go away because I'm putting you away. There we go. Oh, that was Adam. Was talking. Huh? Remember Adam? Remember Adam? That was Adam. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was Adam. He says, I'm not going to go him? away. Well, you are yeah, the go guy away. that corrected you for eating on the show. And what? Adam, call me. Call me. What? What do you mean call I, me? I told Adam to call me. Oh, okay. Well, the thing Adam, is... Adam, call me. Call me. Adam is an asshole. So anyway... <laughs> uh, 
uh, he can just sit there and he'll, you know, it's a waste of his time. Yeah, I'm eating. gonna be on the show anyhow. I don't know you're not, bub. What ha what happened to Jeff? Uh, oh my God! You know what happened today? What? I just remembered. What? I'm driving home from Lodi, mm -hmm. and in my rearview mirror, I see some car like lock them up. The, the, this car came from one side to the other, mm -hmm. and another red car locked them up. And I said, geez, this guy was like going across. He must like try to cut him off or something. But it's sort of weird because he was like behind the car in front. I was wondering what was going on. All of a sudden, that red car is next to me and goes in front of me. And then the car, that silver car, was following him. Mm -hmm. And he was right diagonal next to me. And the guy had a gun facing the guy in the red car. Really? And then, yes, it was so bizarre. And then the 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 silver car took that off ramp and the red car followed him like this was like road rage or something coming out of Stockton area oh my god that's the first time I ever seen like a gun imagine like imagine that up. in Stockton I know it, one of the biggest gang crime areas of the sun oh my god it was such a trip though because I could clearly see the window was down and I could see the the front seat area and the guys the guy was like that with the gun Based in that guy, and then the guy took the off ramp, and the guy followed him, and they're like, "Great road!" Oh my god! Great I hear road McLarens road. have bulletproof uh, windows, so you're oh, okay. Yeah, I don't drive that car. Oh. Uh, it, it, amazing, amazing story there. That's yeah, I wanted to find out. Hey, uh, Alan, you got cop friends? Can you see if there's any anyone? Yeah, but but tell them I don't know a thing. <laughs> Please don't get me involved. <laughs> oh yeah, but I, actually, I saw the guy. Address and phone number here. I saw the guy in the silver car who was pointing the gun. Because right when he went by me, I looked at the guy. And then, uh, oh my, I was so crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have put the your car into high gear and got away from there. I was going to chase him just to get on video. But then I <laughs> said, maybe I better not. <laughs> After the gun came out, I said, ah, that's a little too far from me. Oh, boy. Anyway. So, um, uh, what is the uh, what's new with you guys at all? Anything? It's raining again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's raining. Stormy. Yeah. Yeah. Windy. That's it. Thank Good night. You. Sorry, Jeff didn't make the show tonight. Okay, well, hold on uh -huh. a second. I'm going to put. I'm do remove. Okay, and then I'm going to report out Adam. Okay. Oh, Adam. Yeah. Text, text me later. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm submitting him uh, uh, as a report. Uh, I don't want to include a screenshot of him. He's too ugly. Okay. And I'm reporting it. Okay. There you go, Adam. You're probably going to get your uh, your ass kicked. Anyway. <laughs> By a guy in Stockton with a gun. Mm -hmm. See, I wish that... Uh, um, uh, uh, Zoom would have something in their system where we could literally lock people out once they call, and I don't yeah. want them. But it, well, you can't Facebook do that. You can do that. Guy. You can do that with a lot of other things like Facebook and so on. Uh, but you can't at least we didn't see the guy masturbating. Yeah, or at least if you could uh, push, you know, too bad when they show somebody's trying to get in, if you could push a preview and it'll show like a little box of that person, and then you could actually see that. There, there are several ways of things they could do, but they don't do it. Yeah, my friend works for Zoom. He started there from uh, startup. Well, why don't you complain to him for me? Is yeah, I thought you want me to get the cops in in, in your area. I'll go ahead and. Uh, I know cops in San Jose, Stockton on the. Freeway. I don't know where this guy is. Uh, he might be in Europe somewhere. You know. We talked to him before. I forget where. Yeah, he was. and before I said, "Don't call me again." He said, I, "No, I'm going to keep calling. I'm going to keep keep you know." He wastes my. He, he's, I'll just keep him in the waiting room if he wants to waste. I think I rather time. would have seen a butthole. This guy was an ass. I, you're, you're not going to be here. You told me. He said, "Yeah, I am. I'm going to stay right here." Wrong. Yeah. Anyway, so here we are. Just the two of us. God. <sighs> see, not mm -hmm. much going on. Hmm? It's just raining again, so it's, it's good. It's good. Better than <clears throat> last year was like a whole month of just. Pouring rain, and at least this one's sort of spreading it out, so that's nice. Yeah, yeah. So when I went on to Gabnet's webpage, I've told you this before, I don't know how, how come it, it's not a problem. 
Steve uh, Fox's music comes on automatically. So I turned that off and automatically started with your Alex Bennett classics. That was funny. Yeah. That's an right old, under Amy, that, but that, that they both started and bubbles and you were talking. So I thought, wow, this is fun. See, it's funny because, uh, uh, well, it shouldn't, Steve Fox's thing shouldn't start automatically, but it does. We talked about this a month or two ago. Well, Steve you, is listening. Make it so yours doesn't start automatically. It's your website, not his, isn't it? Yeah, basically, it's his. He's got to stop it there. I don't think I oh, can stop okay. it here. It's not a big deal. I did, every time I come on, I just did automatically comes on with both, and then I turn his off. And sometimes I come on to the site. Wait a minute. The the the, the uh, video, the YouTube video, shouldn't start automatically. It did. It did. Today, the, the the Alex Bennett classic mm -hmm. with the dogs that was cute. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got to see about that. That shouldn't be. Yeah, they all three of them. That's the first time I've seen the Alex Bennett classics, but. I thought, I thought it was funny. Hold on a second. Let me just... Uh, Try me just it from move, another computer. Let me just, just move over here and see where... What What is it? Uh, i got to go to my... Uh, Gabnet.net. i got to go to my... Uh, here it is. There it is. Oh, there it is. And uh, let's see here. A lot of start. Let me see here. i got to figure out what i got to do here. Hold on a moment, folks. I'm, I'm just fixing stuff as we go along. Lazy loading, aspect ratio... Uh, move show controls, show related windows, events, huh? Player false default, you lazy loading. It doesn't say here that it uh, auto start. Here we go. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. Uh, but something's on auto start or something. Okay, it won't start now automatically. Okay. So. Okay, well, that's the show. Uh, you heard here, oh. Alex. Fix something. We're out of here. Good night. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I just have to do something, though. I just have to publish it, okay, so that when people come on to it now, it won't do that, okay. And that's the latest. Okay, we're going to close we're this window. I'm going to open another window. So, mm -hmm. uh, if, and I'm going to see. Although Steve Fox's thing's going to start, I'm not going to open it because it doesn't need to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have everything. Yeah, but anyway, so remember, remember Alan. Remember we went to lunch. Yeah. Remember he he drives the white van that you're not supposed to go to. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, I think he I remembers me. I was the fat one. <laughs> I'm dancing with Adrian. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> hey, that looks like Justin Beaver. Justin hey, Adrian, are we gonna go? Are we gonna go visit Alex soon? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I'm gonna get a new watch. Yeah. And a new dog. <laughs> you gonna get a dog? Can we get a dog? No, we're not getting a dog. I'll be walking the dog. Okay. Do you want? Okay. If you, well, you, what type, of, what type of watch are you getting? Okay. What type of watch are you getting? Like an Apple, sort of, but it's a kid's uh, one that I could. Know where she is and all that stuff. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, okay, okay. Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. Good night. Adrian. Look at that. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, yeah, wow. I've never seen that. Can you do oh, that. Why don't you go do a TikTok? Do a TikTok with that. You probably get like a thousand views, at least. <laughs> she, she is such. Okay. She is such a ham. <laughs> hey, out, out. Oh. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you gonna are you gonna throw her out of the room, Brian? I don't know, he left. Mm. Oh well. Just the two Jews, I guess. Right? Yeah, yep. just okay. you and me. Anybody else gonna call <laughs> tonight? I don't I got one guy named Steve Hat. Yeah, like that's for real. Who the hell's that? I, I think know. that's uh, the same guy who called earlier. I think Jeff will be back, and there's Brian. He Problem was, solved. What'd you do? Kill her? He bought a lock for the door. Did you sell yeah. it? Did you sell it? <laughs> no. Oh. God, is it exhausting? Long days in Lodi. Oh. Yeah, I had to do a bunch of training for stuff, so, yeah. Yeah. You should have pulled out your own Glock and pointed it out the window. 
I, I, it was crazy. I've never seen a gun being pulled on somebody, like a real gun like in like that. Road rage. He didn't fire it. He just pointed it up. No, but then they went off onto the exit, flying, like going really fast. And they're like, two. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Come on, yeah, folks. You, we need a couple more people here tonight. We need some more people here tonight. Yeah, yeah really? Well, what happened? To yeah. Jeff? When, where's Phil when we need them to talk for an hour? Well, no, don't encourage that. We, I was exhausted from last night. <laughs> oh, I got people that get on Amy's show. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Steve Hatch says and... he's for real. Let's make see if he's for Who? real. Who? Steve Hat is his name. Let me just put my face on here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not That's looking That's the best way to do it. Well, don't worry. Steve Hat, I am for real. Okay, Steve, are you there? Hey, he is there. Yeah. Are you for real, Steve? Steve, turn on your, uh, your, are you connecting your audio? Uh, no porno. <laughs> it says, I'm for real, no porno. Steve, are you there? Connecting to audio, but it's not connecting. If, if it's, uh, uh, I, it, we see we can't, uh, we can't hear you. Well, let me, let me push this. Thing. Well, he hasn't spoke either. Say something, Steve. Hold on a second. I got, we got to no, connect you. your audio. Let me see here. Uh, allow, um, um, uh, 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 allow, uh, stop. Uh, 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 his audio isn't working for some reason. Uh, let's it's see. It's not showing here. mute. It's just saying connected. Yeah, it just says connecting to audio. Hmm. Hmm. You got a problem there. Can you hear us, uh, Steve, at all? Yeah. Uh, you see. Yeah, you can shake your head because we can't hear you. See, there he is, folks. That's Steve Hat. Um, oh, here he is. He's going to write something. Okay. He's going to write something. Hmm. He's going to write a big penis. A <laughs> 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 big penis. Right. <laughs> Old school leaves, porno. That leaves Bill out. So, well, let's so see. I heard. Can you hear us? Yes or no? Well, he, I don't you... think he can hear us because if he doesn't have his... Oh, you can't. Oh, yeah, hear you us. can hear us. Yeah, you can hear us. Well, yeah, we don't have your audio. We just so we don't. We can't, can't hear your audio. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just write something. If you have a comment, just write your comment. We'll read your comment. Okay. This is this, <laughs> this is what everybody tunes in for, folks. We got thirty-six <laughs> people right now. <laughs> oh my God! It's more than when Phil was on last night. Now, if Jeff, yeah, that's if Jeff thirty-three called, if, more than Phil. If Jeff <laughs> called and couldn't turn off his uh, his uh, thing. Then uh, we'd get like a hundred people, and he's still gone. Let's see. Pam didn't come and save the day for him. <laughs> oh boy! Let's and where's see. where's oh, uh, Phil's uh, twin? I think Steve is writing a long note to us. <laughs> he's right. Where are you? <laughs> Where are you from, Steve? <laughs> okay, now let's. Here we see. go. Here we go. Here we go. I uh, don't okay. know why audio is not working. Don't know why audio. Oh, working on it. Okay. Working good. On Where are you from? Steve, where are you from? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. We, we can see that. If you go where are your, you from? If you, if you go to your settings, Steve, listen to me. Steve, if you go to your settings, you might have your setting for your audio set to the wrong microphone. That's yeah. possible. Okay. He's from, oh, where? What's oh. UT? Is that, I don't know. Hmm. Well, we'll let him figure it out here, but we'll keep him on because I like to encourage new people. Yes. Uh, oh, Tennessee. Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee, right on. Yeah. That's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and here's Oh, Tony. my God. Speaking about somebody else, he just... <laughs> oh, it looks like he just... Are you, are, you, are you trying to get the... the uh... Oh, my God. Tony, the... Tony. Yeah. You, you look like you haven't left the house for weeks. <laughs> My hair is all wild, I know. At, at, Get it more wild. Also, Get it more wild. I know. I, I yeah, yeah, it's Tennessee. all long in the back, too. And you haven't shaved in days. I know. My mother's going to kill me tonight in my sleep. My mother's going to kill me. She's died. I just let my hair go now and I can out shave. <laughs> you have no reason to live anymore. Exactly. My brother's like, man, you look... Look at that hair. It's still growing. I said, it's all curly, though, in the back. Yeah. <laughs> I was just watching on TV. For four hours, though. Yeah. You look like you're turning you. into Albert Einstein. But, <laughs> except for the I was brain just part. watching NYPD Blue, so I feel like Sipowitz. <laughs> Sipowitz? Uh, 
You got a little bit like more show than he had. I, mean, I had more hair than him, yeah. <laughs> it was a good episode. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, you know. You really, I got to shave. You're right. I got to get a haircut soon. You got to shave. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I shave once a week at least. Yeah. It's but, bad. You know, and people don't notice it, though, with me. See, because I don't, I don't grow it profusely. Do I look that? I do look kind of scary, but my head just looks like it's getting all curly. My mother used wait, to grab but, me wait, by the wait. Are you saying I, I look scary? You mean now more than ever? Yeah, I mean, oh, well, yeah. I'm on the, <laughs> I just only in the house, other than to go to the post office. What happened? Take in the boxes news and today? go back home. I haven't, I haven't heard the news. What? Anything good happened in the news today? Let's By good happening, about. you mean is Trump in any more trouble today than he was yeah, yesterday? I haven't heard. Yeah. I didn't watch anything. I don't know. It's a crazy world. It's a crazy world. Well, I heard Elon Musk is suing that guy for AI. He wants uh, part of that money. He said he created it. I, I, I don't know if I heard the whole story right. This? I, I didn't hear that. My brother was telling me about it. He says, yeah, the, he, something with the AI, artificial. He uh, he says that's part of his idea and he owes him money. I don't know the whole story, but I got like, to look Like Musk it. needs the money. He's just going to say, how, he's yeah. building a new car. My brother said, it goes, Brian, is this true? It goes to 60 miles an hour in like two seconds? No, it's like once point something seconds. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's like insane. Now. Who wants to do that? They're, they're, they're trying to see like what G's is that pulling from somebody? They're putting down payments down. He has 60 grand. It's not going to be ready for two years. Yeah, but you know something? Yeah. I got to tell you. I understand. I may mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but these uh, these uh, um, um, cars, these uh, Teslas, are supposedly really fast. I mean, they pull they a fast pickup. They're very fast. They're yeah. very fast. And I wouldn't you'd think an electric engine, you putter along, but no. It's not I like. I bet you Recaro is selling a lot of seats for them, isn't it? Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it, it's an amazing uh, uh, thing uh, there with those cars. Now, what I saw, which is mm -hmm. fascinating me, especially because it took place in uh, San Francisco. There's this guy who bought a Tesla with, you know, the automatic uh, driving, right? And they jumped it off the street? No, the no, one? no. He, uh, he, 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 I love it because he's going down streets I know. And like oh, he, really? he was going from the, uh, I don't know, somewhere like the, the marina and going out to the Leg Palace of the Legion of Honor and then once put his hands on the steering wheel. And I oh, said yeah. to myself, you mm -hmm. know, I've had this fear that I'd, I've forgotten how to drive. I would love one of those, you know? Yeah. How, yeah and I have a couple of questions, though, and I can ask you because you probably know the answers. He knows the car stuff, yeah. Number one. This does it because it has cameras all over the car, right? Mm -hmm. What happens if it's raining or it's foggy or it's you know <coughs> nighttime? Oh, Steve, we got we got sound. We Steve, have, okay. Yes, we have sound. Steve. Hey. Hi, Steve. You're in Tennessee. How you doing? Yeah. Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Let me let me just uh, uh, continue with the thought I had with. Uh, I I I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, what happens with those those automatic cars if the cameras can't see anything, or do they see in the dark? I have no idea. You have no idea. All I know is it was great to watch. Yeah, so Francisco has these uh, uh, driverless taxis well, now. He passed by one of those. Yeah, the Waymos. I, they had them in oh, Arizona. Really, yeah. What's they the name? What's the name of the company? Bruce Way, Waymo. Waymo. Oh. They yeah. had them in Arizona when yeah. I was there. They were all, all I, over Scottsdale. But, you know, they have all these stuff on the top of the car and everything like that, you know. Whereas with the Tesla, you don't know that it's an automatic driving car. It, and it seemed to be, they said, it was this, they were testing out the newest, uh, they downloaded the newest um, uh, version of their auto driving software. And it was terrific. I mean, mm -hmm. it just it took into account people who were cutting in front of the car and stuff like that. You know, very good. I could live with that. I, I it would take me a while before I wouldn't be pissing my pants, but you know, because it's scary. You're so used to having to have your hands on the wheel of a car. But if yeah. this car can do it better than I can, <coughs> I'd be happy to buy one. You know. Yeah, where uh, the Sunnyvale plant is, um, our my company. They have, uh, there's a bunch of companies in that area that every once in a while, you know, like every day you just pull out of the parking lot and you see another car. Google, there used to be only Google, 
But now there's a, I forget the company's name, but there's a bunch of other companies that all of a sudden you'll see another weird, you know, here comes another car with all this weird, you know, thing like a luggage rack, but they're all cameras going off. And then, you know, 20 minutes later, you see another, and everything else. Yeah, another car walk, drive by, and it's got another different kind of car and different, you know, graphics on the side for a different company, and it's got all these cameras everywhere. And yeah. It's like non, nonstop, they're, they're testing cars in Silicon Valley. Yeah, well, that's the, almost the home of, like, that's where you yeah. said you see Teslas everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere, you know, I've everywhere. gotten to the point where. They're I am I am of the the uh, opinion that Tesla drivers are just as bad as Prius drivers, if not worse. <laughs> yeah, I have come to that conclusion. Tesla drivers can get away quicker. Yeah, well, I I did a lot of door dashing last last week up in Cupertino, Los Gatos, and that area over there, and it was insane. They're all over the place, and they drive right in front of you, and they cut in front of you all over the place. I, I live in a and they drive slow in the fast lane. I live in a cul-de-sac of 10 houses. Four of them have Teslas. Yeah. Four all of the families over. have Teslas here. Well, I think I think it's a combination. And I drive the Prius, free, so I know the what they are, too. Lessons. Yeah. Yeah, but, I have to drive the Prius for my DoorDash, you know, because it gets good mileage. That's my daughter's car, but I know you don't like those either. But man, I tell you, they they're just as bad. What I didn't say I didn't like Priuses. No, me and Brian are. I I don't like them because I go over Ultima Pass. <laughs> you know that day that we were talking on this show. You about can go fast in them, Prius but they thing? don't. <laughs> yeah, when we were talking that night about the Priuses, I swear the next day there's a stupid blue Prius going slow, and everybody was going around them. Going up all to my past. I know, I've seen them. But well, I know actually, they can go fast. Actually, they can this, go guy, fast. this guy was annoying other drivers because the Tesla was very, uh, uh, what can we call it, driving correctly, okay? And they just wanted to well, go see, faster and they wanted to go around him. Yeah, they do the same thing. They drive really slow because they want to get somewhere or, or far away and they'll drive nice and even and slow. But if they're just driving around town and getting somewhere, they drive like crazy because they're saving their batteries, just like the Prius does. No, but the, oh. the Tesla is the Tesla. He was driving once they were on a straightaway. The thing just was clipping, getting well, good. Yeah, time. they they go fast. I mean, but I don't think you're ever going to get. Faster than a damn. I don't think you're ever going to get a ticket. Sure. You're not going to get a ticket with one because it's well, watching sure this. It's watching the speed limit. It's watching it, but you can blow it away. Oh yeah, you can flip the now. How, I guess with all of these, like with the Tesla, if you've got an auto and all of a sudden you need to take over quick, you can immediately oh, yeah. do that. What by tapping on the brake or something, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. But, but the Waymos about... were really. What were you saying? What about Sorry. the Waymos? Yeah, the Waymos were really strange when I was in Scottsdale because they were all over there like bugs, and that you just you'd be sitting there at a stoplight and. A, driverless car would come up next to you and make a left turn in front of you or whatever yeah but here's, they'd stop on the corner I they make read, right hand would you want to the, ride in one of those people were just calling them up on their app and standing in the street and they'd pull up and they'd climb into the back seat and take kevin, off kevin you have a semi you're driving a semi just turn when it turns in front of you you go straight well, what what's they have the, they have semis like that now oh yeah oh. yeah yep yep yeah. tesla Tesla's making them. Yeah, well, you know they're, something. They're running Cheetos. They're running the Cheeto trucks. Free, that's, free to lay, yeah. That's, free not, to lay, yeah. that's not a bad idea, by the way. Trucks. It's a shitty idea. Why? A terrible idea. Why? Because it's a big piece of equipment. Well, I know it's a big piece of equipment, but if it drives safely, you know. It drives safely, but the other people around it don't. And it kills. Oh, that's cool. You'll never talk me into that one. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. You know. He likes his big diesel truck. <laughs> okay, so let's let's ask our newest yeah. person here, Steve. What kind of car do you have? I have a Kia. Uh, I forgot the model name. <laughs> I have a Kia. A sporty oh, okay, Kia. a Kia. <laughs> is it hybrid or is it? No, it's a uh, gas. Gas only. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what do you do down in your neck of the woods, Steve? Uh. 
Since I retired, I hardly do anything. You hardly do anything. Now, how do you I, like doing hardly anything? <laughs> it's hard work, sleeping all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, my, I don't like it, you know. I, I hate uh, it, you know. Uh, that's why I keep doing this show, uh, to keep me. Well, I'm glad you do. I think you're the best thing on YouTube. I love this GabNet and your little Monday night or Monday afternoon. Mondays are wonderful, aren't they? And I can say that on. because at least two of the people here are on the Monday show. And well, two of the true. people have been asked not to call it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best to not get uninvited. Just oh, oh case, if, you, so. if you can call the Monday I'll show, we'd it. love to have you on the Monday show. You know, and now that you're I'll retired, what else are you going to do with your life? <laughs> Where in Tennessee are you? Uh, Eastern Tennessee. Uh, that helps a lot. I mean, is there a town? Yeah. Uh, we probably wouldn't know it, right? I'm trying to think. The city I'm in, you've probably never heard of. It's, it has the fascinating name of uh, Johnson City. Uh, it's, it's, let's say, approximately 90 miles from Knoxville, mm -hmm. which is where the University of Tennessee is located. Yeah. Not far from the North, uh, western North Carolina border. Were you born and raised in Tennessee? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but oh, I've been really? I've uh, been pretty much a vagabond ever since I joined the army back in the seventies. I've been to the Middle East, Europe, uh, Greenland for a couple of years. I hear Greenland. Uh, so I, I hear Greenland's very nice. It is if you if you can get used to minus forty degrees. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the colder months, and six months of darkness. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I, that whole thing. I tell you, I had a friend who was a comedian, and uh -huh. uh, he he lived up in he went he went up to work for a week uh -huh. in Alaska, uh -huh. and it was during a time of year where uh -huh. there wasn't a lot of night. Okay, uh -huh. and he said he called me and he said it's two o'clock in the morning up here. Uh -huh. I'm about to go on. And the sun is shining outside. Right. Oh. He said, I don't know how I do that. You know, I'm so used to going <laughs> to a club at two in the morning and it's pitch dark outside. How do you live uh, how do you live there with those times when, you know, there's more uh nighttime than there is day? You must go crazy. Well, it's dark twenty four hours of the day during the dark season, and it's light twenty four hours a day during the the other half of the year, so and is that why the people up there are crazy? Probably, yeah. Because yeah. I imagine that would drive people nuts. Not, not particularly. I was only there for two years, and uh, I was working on an uh, Air Force base. Yeah. Uh, as a civilian uh, contractor, and uh, it has its own beauty too up there. I mean, that the work site we we lived on the Air Force base, but we our work site was a mile or so away. And from that work site, you could look. You could look at the dist off in the distance at the uh, icebergs as they calved off of the glacier up there. You know, that's oh, wow. that's something you won't see just anywhere. Yeah, no, I hear it's. I hear some of it is just absolutely breathtaking. It is. But it I is. can't imagine, you know, it being night for six months, and now I want to go to sleep, but I don't know if it's time for me to go to sleep because <laughs> it isn't. It's dark all the time. You know, well, uh, it's, it, it takes a little while to get used to, but you do get used to it after a while. Yeah, yeah. The longest sunset I ever saw was flying to Anchorage, Alaska, and that wasn't even that far, but mm -hmm. I was flying north to Alaska, Anchorage, and the sun just kept setting. It mm. just never never went all the way down. Mm. It was just like I left, uh, well, I left California, but then once I got up to Seattle, it was starting to go down, and then we took off. Mm -hmm. And as we kept going north, it just kept sort of just staying there. Mm. Well, some, weird. something I've never seen, I've always wanted to see, you probably saw it, was the Aurora Borealis. Do you see it? Yeah, oh, yeah, it. you see that up there, too. Yeah. yeah. That's got to yeah. be amazing. It is. It is. Yeah. Well, you're lucky. Well, I had worked in Saudi Arabia for two years prior to that, so I needed to cool off. <laughs> oh, jeez. After... Jesus. <laughs> after 120 de degrees in the shade, you know. Yeah, but what I never could get is that in the yeah. old, say, Iraq, 
we sent our soldiers over there with full body, body mm -hmm. gear, you know, all the gear and everything. Mm -hmm. And the temperature is 130 degrees. Right. Don't tell me it's a dry heat. It's 130 degrees, <laughs> you know. Uh, so that was a nice change, in other words. Oh, yeah, yeah. I needed to cool off. <laughs> what, what branch of the military were you in? I was only in the army for six years. That was from seventy-four to eighty. I worked for the I worked for the army branch of the NSA. It was called the Army Security Agency. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And uh, but uh, when I was in Saudi Arabia, that was as a contractor. Also, I worked for Bendix. They had a contract with the uh, <clears throat> Civil Air Patrol in Saudi Arabia. Wow. I was doing. Uh, Basically, a glorified electronics technician mm -hmm. type work. Yeah, and what what did you do once you got back home? What do you what was your line of work before you obviously retired? Oh, I did some uh, uh, fiber optic works also, and at the Naval Research Lab for about three years. Well, I bounced around, but basically, I've tried to stay in calibration and maintenance for most of my career. Mm -hmm. So, I worked for. After I got out of the army, I worked for a few different uh, uh, corporations. Yeah. But eventually, I went back to government work. So I was working as a government employee mm -hmm. uh, with the Department of the Army. So I, I imagine you got a pretty good retirement through all of this, right? Oh yeah, I got a pretty good retirement yeah. package. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm waiting to get my retirement package from Gabnet, but it hasn't seemed to come <laughs> through yet. I'm sure you got a huge payout from Sirius. No, not really. <laughs> not really. Those those bastards. Uh, do you know what their idea of uh, after nine years with them, almost ten years of severance mm. was? Sixteen weeks pay. Right. You know, and I'm going. What? You know, come on. That's why. That's huh? why I quit Sirius. They canceled your show. <laughs> I wrote a nasty letter and told them. I told them <laughs> no more Alec Bennett, yeah. and I can't stay. I can't stay. I got to go too. So, so you, I canceled you, my, you uh, go back with me to the, to Sirius XM. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> you know, I suddenly realized it's been ten years. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I been... was never in any of the markets when you were doing commercial radio, but yeah. I, I came to know you on Sirius, and that's that's. Yeah. Well, that was a, that was a good show. I love that show. Oh yeah, yeah, I thought it was great. I had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, yeah, because that's what? about the time I got retired too. Really? Oh, you well, got not really early. Twenty fifteen. Yeah. Did they retire was it really you? Really early, I, early in the morning. What did you do? What, well, wait a minute, Kevin. What did you do that they retired you from? I thought you drove trucks. Well, when I was yeah earlier, I drove trucks for forty years, and then I was a distribution plant manager, ran oh, okay. a okay distribution center in a in a helium plant for mm -hmm. twelve years, and then they retired you. Yeah. yeah, fired because it kept sucking the helium. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Why? Why? Why did they? Why did they let you go, Kevin? If they I... shut down the plant. They shut down the West Coast plant. Oh, okay. All right. We were we were distribution point to the uh, to Asia, and uh, from the West Coast to the East Coast. I mean, to the to the overseas to the um, Asia, and then they'd send their stuff back to us, and then we distribute it back to the East Coast. Because it gets me very mad. Build up their cylinders. It, it gets me very mad when I read about these companies. They're letting people go. You know, they're downsizing. You know. Yeah. Well, it was all the Silicon Valley crashes. What happened is, you know, all the Intels and the AMDs and all those big uh, Silicon Valley companies basically shut down. Yeah. And took all their manufacturing to Texas. Took it all to. Arizona and up to Hillsboro and where it all started in the heart of Silicon Valley, they were all gone. And that's what I made a living off of those people. Wow. And yeah. when they left, I mean, Intel headquarters was three blocks away from us and we kowtowed to them. If they called me at two o'clock in the morning, I got up and went over to there. Yeah. And I did it many times. Well, when that whole thing happened in Silicon Valley, I can understand them laying people off because there's, there's no money coming in. How are you going to pay them? You know? Well, uh, I don't know how many times when I was working in the cylinder fill plant, I was working at 10 o'clock at night going, when is the silicon rush going to stop? It was a gold rush with silicon. I was at CNN and when it When's it, it going to stop? I was at CNN when it happened. Or not CNN. <laughs> 
CNET. CNET. Yeah. CNET. And I remember that too. I forget who uh, I worked for. And I'd just sit there and go, when is this going to stop? And we did anything for everybody. Well, we, I was sitting, and, you know, people. we were doing fine with C CNET and, you know, <clears throat> we were building a brand there, you know. And then all of a sudden, one day, we start hearing these stories about things collapsing. <laughs> And then we start hearing about furniture winding up on street corners because people were leaving their office buildings. Yes, yeah. you know they would take was, off and leave their boats in the driveway. It was a major catastrophe, yep. really. I mean, people losing their jobs left and right, and you know, yep, it yep. was terrible. The stocks were going to shit, and it was crazy. It was crazy. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah. In two thousand eight, we were sitting around going, "Okay, when are they going to come get us?" And I found a way to trans. Trans, uh, transpose our distribution center into a shipping point for the wow. train. When that I got when, us another seven years. When I was at CNET, I had a commercial I read once, and I almost broke up laughing reading it because it was one of those live reads I had to do. And it was about some company that was looking for people to go to work for them, and they were. And this was a recruit, <coughs> recruitment advertisement. And you know, one of the important points of working for this company. They have dry cleaning on premises. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All those places. But how you're selling people, I'm working for your high-tech company because you've got dry cleaning. Because you don't go home. Purple tie. Purple tie dry cleaning. That's what they have at my company. They have a closet there. You can put your stuff in there. and yeah. They got the food. They got yeah. everything. Wow. You can do everything at work. Well, Google the, the, has the, 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 yeah, Google the, does that. Yeah, the they, they have a truck that comes up and it looks like a lunch truck, and it's a hair cutting salon. Yep. Yeah, they have two chairs in there to, to cut your hair. Yeah, and Tony, they used to you have salons on site. So in other words, in other words, you're happy if nobody goes home, is what you're saying. Correct. I mean, they had that stuff on site too. Wow. Yeah. It, it, that's what it was. I mean, I remember when they used to tell us that if we didn't get our gases over to that plant. Hundred thousand dollars a minute, it cost. So wow. you need to get it over there now. Oh, Literally, <laughs> expensive parts. Well, companies are letting people no, off. That's your like, cell phones and your TVs. That's what it was. A lot of these companies computers. are letting people off like crazy. <laughs> Wafers. Yeah, we're going through the the layoffs again, uh, and it's it's terrible. It's terrible because what companies do these days is the reason they let people go is not because they aren't making money. I'll, yeah, I see it with your finger up. I'll go to you in a second here. Uh, it, it isn't because uh, they aren't making money. It's because their stock price isn't high enough. And if they let people go, the stock price will go up. Yes. Shareholders run the Steve? world. Yeah. Shareholders Steve? are one of our core values for our company. Yeah. Yep. Take care of the shareholders. Yep. Yeah, but yep. shouldn't we take care of the business? Uh, you know, uh, Steve, you wanted to say something? Uh, yeah, I've been watching you, uh, your GabNet for several years now. And, uh, I've learned that you know more, a lot more about the movie and television business than the average bear. Can you explain why this has been going on for oh, 10 or 15 years probably? When I'm watching a movie or a television show, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. whenever they do a close up or a two shot, the cameraman cannot hold the camera steady. <laughs> He's shaking it oh. from left to right, up and down. That's that annoys the, new, the hell out of me. That's the new <laughs> it takes way me to, right out of the scene, whatever I'm that's watching. That's the new way to film, yeah. Yeah. It's the newest what's the drug point? on the market. The, yeah, they actually go out, of their, they go out of their way to shake it. Yeah. 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 You know what I saw today? I saw an old interview with Bobby Slayton. It was done at Sirius XM. Number one, the guy who was doing the interview was horrible. I, can't even, I didn't even recognize his name. Uh, but... Uh, it was about Bobby Slayton and the fact that his wife had died and all about his wife dying and going through that process. Yeah. They're shooting it, and they're just shooting the face of the host. They hardly ever shoot Bobby. And when Bobby's <laughs> talking for most of the interview, and they're just shooting. The, and then the camera, the guy can't keep the camera straight. It was at the floor <laughs> one time, up at the ceiling. <laughs> and I'm thinking, then why did you even shoot the goddamn thing if you don't know how to do it? You know? Mm -hmm. Well, you called it something one time. What do they call that type of uh, filming? Well, they want to make it look. They, it. they want to make it look documentary. Mm. You know? Maybe that's what it is. Because well, it all looks the, more all realistic the, if it shakes. 
To me, <laughs> to, to me, the it's job just, is to make that camera go as smoothly as is humanly possible. Yeah, most, but it's all hand. Well, when, well, when I'm reading the when I'm reading the book, reading a scene in a book, I'm not moving the the book from left to right. You know. Yeah, you're just yeah. Make it seem more lively or whatever. You know. So why should that happen? When I'm well, that that also shouldn't be the case anymore because they, they, most cameras. I have some. I have a GoPro mm -hmm. here. I have another a couple of other cameras here. Yeah, they all, they're has, all has the, the, anti. Uh, it, 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 uh, your iPhone's a perfect example. You're never right. going to have an unsteady shot with an iPhone. That's right. Isn't that why they invented the steady cam? Well, the steady ago? cam used to be cost a fortune to have. Okay, mm -hmm. those things were going for ten thousand bucks a pop. All of a sudden, they come along with these uh, steady thing. Steady. Uh, they don't call it steady cam, but they call it steady something. First, mm -hmm. it showed up, I think, in Sony cameras and Sony video cameras. And then it started showing up everywhere, and now you buy yourself a uh, iPhone, and you can take that phone and just shake it like crazy and stabilization, absolute stabilization. Yeah, it's amazing. So, you know, what happened to our uh, friend Brian? He he disappeared now. Yeah. Anyway. So what else is happening? I'm I'm looking at the news today. And uh, I, I actually I didn't look at the news today. So what? Anything happening? Uh -huh. We should know. What, oh, Israel. Know. Uh, here's what the Biden has decided to do with the Gaza. He's going to drop supplies to people in Gaza from airplanes. They mm -hmm. should have done that months ago. Yeah, but my question is, how many people are you going to kill hitting them with food? <laughs> Comes down with a big parachute. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, it, it, they're Not coming out of the sky. Fast. And I think a couple of other countries are going in on that with us. And uh, you know, no, the Gazans don't like uh, beef, do they? And isn't isn't some animal in 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 Palestinian against eating? Uh, no, like no, it, it's the same thing as Jews. Is it really what they call important? halal? We call kosher. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I knew it was something. So yeah, they're no probably sending them bacon. No pork. No yeah. pork. I'm, I'm sure Biden will send them bacon. Yeah, right. Probably. You know, who doesn't love bacon, says Biden. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was in Saudi Arabia, you couldn't buy, uh, you couldn't buy Coca-Cola. The what? reason behind that was because Coca-Cola was in Israel. Really? Really? Yeah. Buy Pepsi. But no coke. <laughs> I yeah, thought about what year was that? What year was that? Uh, I was uh, originally I was there from uh, 1984 to 86. Okay. I went back again in the 90s. Still good. Because I was thinking there was some strength when I worked for DHL back in the late 70s. I was always checking the. Um, I checked the bags that we sent over there for the documents and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we had to open the bags that came from like Bank of America and all these places downtown that, that sent documents over there. We had to check them for weird stuff like Coca-Cola mm -hmm. advertisements and, really? and all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, even pictures of of people in compromising positions. And I had to confiscate that stuff and pull it out of the bags because people sent it over there. And sometimes if they got a hold of it, they'd grab those bags and burn them. The thing that struck me funny was what played, they did with the with the Western customs newspapers. Customs got it. With the Western <clears throat> newspapers, what? Like uh, I was, uh, I, I always read USA Today when I <clears throat> back back then, and uh, every Western newspaper that comes through has to go through the censorship first. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Hmm. Any woman they drew a, they right. they marked her, they uh, covered her with a magic marker, you know. The face and, and all that. And yeah. the funny Redacted. thing was that they would show uh, athletic events like a track meet, and uh, <laughs> it would be a male, a male uh, runner, but he looked, he, he didn't, he he was wearing shorts, you know, so you could see his legs normally, but they blacked that out too. I don't know if they thought that some of these male runners looked effeminate or 
was more like a woman than a man or what you know there was some weird stuff that yeah. we had to you know find in chuck before it went over there too yeah because it because yeah. they would take the whole shipment and confiscate it if they found one little thing like let that. me see where's oh, my yeah, yeah. we were customs before where, customs. where's yeah. my pen let me just write this down do not don't ever go to saudi <laughs> yeah, I was gonna arabia say, that's one truck check that off the yeah, list saudi arabia you get off really the plane bad. they throw a bag over you yeah, right. <laughs> what happened it's hot out today <laughs> I don't believe Tony's had his coffee today. No. I didn't actually. I've been <laughs> going to go for a cup, but I didn't do it. Good for you. Thanks, Tony. I'll wait till later, though, when I'm watching the Dead End Kids. So I'm gonna He's watch a lot coffee. more subdued than usual. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't actually have it in front of me. I should have got I'll get it later, though. I well, got cake cups. Oh, okay. You know, I'm always getting blamed by you, Alex, for sending them coffee. When sending I me coffee. In. So now I'm sending them coffee. Brian called me Tom Hortons. It was good, bro. What did you send him? Tom Hortons? Tim yeah, Hortons? the hockey player. Tim well, Hortons. Tim Hortons. Oh, Tim Hortons. I'm sorry. Tim, Tim Hortons. Hortons. Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. That's a, well, that was a, a, Tim Horton. They have all these Tim Horton uh, like eating places in Canada. Huh. And yep. it's the most popular place to go and have a bite well, to eat. You know? He's a big I hockey to, I tried to find uh, you know, a 12-ounce bag that Amazon has on sale that he probably hasn't had. And that's what I, I didn't said. have that one. Wait, right. How is the Tim Hortons coffee? Good. I liked it, Alex. It's it's better than it's it's one of the better ones he sent me. Yeah. It's right it's ranked in the top three. I like the other one you sent me. I forgot what it was. It was uh, maybe it was the French I don't know if it was the French vanilla. Maybe I should send Alex some in K cups. As I have it in K cups, yeah. I have it in K cups. What was the what was the one I used to buy and drink? Death Wish coffee. Oh, Phil's sending me that black rifle. That's what he's sending black me. Black rifle. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm afraid to open it. Probably got bullets in. <laughs> I'll never sleep for a week. Well, watch everything. Uh, under it's the funny. Floor. They have all these coffees. They're named like yeah. Black Death and this and that and <laughs> you know. And so I, I'm a sucker. I buy them. You know, double the caffeine, triple the caffeine. So you and like I'll the coffee? Wait a minute. I'll try them and some uh -huh. it doesn't even wake me up. So you're a coffee fiend. Alex, would you drink coffee when you were on the air on PLJ? Or oh, you absolutely. Because you're up over and I was wondering. I would imagine you had I a coffee. Often, I yeah. often did. Uh, I did coffee all the time when I was on, at, at, at Sirius XM and when I uh, years ago at PLJ, when I went out to California and was working in uh, at Live 105, I, I did a good amount of cocaine to keep me going too. So oh, I didn't say did coffee. I was so here's here's one yeah. I want to send Tony, but it's got four times the caffeine. Oh, it's I'll be It's a double Kick feature. Kick and horse coffee, and the name feature. of the no, coffee no. is Kick Ass. Kick Ass. And, Kick ass, yeah. Look at it. I'll be watching two movies tonight. Right there, it says. You know what I was going to ask you, Alex? When you worked overnight, this is the one you... that Phil likes a lot. Yeah, he sent me that one. Black Rifle. Wait, wait, hold on a second. What's what a what, what, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold it down, Tony. Uh, what, 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 what's it called? Black Rifle Coffee. And what's the one it? Phil drinks every day, and it's called Mo or Murder Out. What Even his coffee. Does the other side say ho? <laughs> Uh, Moho, Stark Roast, better known. I'm still waiting for that. If Phil's listening, I'm still waiting for the coffee. This <laughs> bag's twenty dollars. He's not going to send it to you, Tony. Are you kidding? Well, he oh. told me he's sending me a bag. I got yeah. my. Oh, Alex, you know, I was going to ask you when you worked overnight. He's always going to ask me. Is he trying to me? Oh, would you have? He uh, asks uh, more people than this. Maybe stupid, yet. but. What? Would you have like any snacks, like donuts or anything overnight? Would they send any food up or no? When I was where? Like overnight at PLJ. Would well, they PLJ, send, like... we got stuff from uh, from uh, the uh, what deli? Not stage, the other one, uh, Carnegie. Oh, so they would send you Car food. We had a thing with Carnegie Deli every night at about oh, nice. midnight. At they midnight, they would send over ba night bagels and locks and, oh, that's nice. and uh, roast beef sandwiches and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And all we had to do was plug them. You know. The donuts yeah, nice had to, to go to the uh, cop stations, Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should do that. I had, I real to... police, real police food. Real nope. police, food. yeah, no. not the one on the show. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, do you, can you get good bagels and locks down in Tennessee? Oh yeah. Not like you can in New York City. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I've never had station. locks. I like bagels, but I've never tried locks. So. Locks is just simple. Nope, you like salmon. you like salmon. Oh, yeah, I know what it is. I've, I've, I've just never yeah, it's tried just simply it. Smoked salmon. It's uh, yeah, I know papers. That. Yeah. Oh, the papers. 
the capers I with like it. I schmear yeah. on my bagel, but uh, I haven't tried the lox. You schmear on your bagel, you said? <laughs> yeah, See, he's here. already turning yeah. into a New Yorker. You yeah. said I've seen yeah, I, watched, uh, I watched a lot of Woody Allen movies. He's one of my favorites, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you spent any time in New York? No, I passed through there once, driving from one point to another, but that was so long ago, I don't even remember where it was now. Really? I, I uh, was driving from one point to another, and then I stopped in New York and never was able to find the exit. See, you came to New York. Yeah. I would like to. I would like to visit New York City. Well, but uh, Marjorie, my wife, yeah, yeah. mentioned tonight, and we hadn't thought about it. The last time we actually went on a vacation somewhere else out of the country, Mm. We went to China, and that was 10 years ago. Mm. Mm. Wow. You like China, too. You were raving about that. I, you said it was nice. Beautiful country. Yeah, you were saying it. Check you like, I think he went there, too. You said you liked it. I mean, lot. that's why, and when I hear what goes on there, I, I kind of get really, feel really sad. Because... Most of the time I, was uh, uh, what? Thailand. Thailand? And uh, I was stationed in Okinawa for about a year and a half when I was in the Army. Yeah. yeah. Must have never got to China. Yeah, but Asia now is very modern. Uh -huh. I mean, oh, yeah, Beijing, yeah. which used to be nothing but dirt roads, is now one of the most modern metropolitan cities with the biggest buildings you've ever seen. It's not that they're tall; they're big. Mm -hmm. Okay, expansive. Yeah, the expansive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're like maybe three big buildings per block. You know, it's not like. Mm -hmm. 20 different mm -hmm. buildings on one block like it is here in New York. You know. Oh, yeah. So uh, are you a, a decaf or a uh, regular coffee drinker, Alex? Uh, regular coffee. Decaf? Why do I want decaf? I, I, who knows? I mean, that's I not know. coffee. Yeah. I, I, really agree. Get the I agree. Thing. Yeah. Do you drink coffee, Brian, at work? Yes. Yeah? Hmm? Yeah, I have at least one cup a day, and it doesn't do anything for me, though. Just like you, it's... When I go to Vietnam, and I get, like, the Vietnamese coffee, even here, but Vietnamese coffee, really strong, doesn't really wake me up. Really? Yeah. There used to I be a coffee... The cocaine uh, on my way to work to the station in uh, in uh, Miami. Uh -huh. Oh, God, don't remind me of that. I do so, hate Florida. I don't... <laughs> it's a flashback. <laughs> but on the way, there was a place yeah. where I would pick up Cuban coffee. Have you ever What's had that? Cuban coffee? Yes, it's that strong. will knock the varnish off your tongue. Oh, you know? really? It, it's it. that that little, a lot of sugar in it, right? Don't spill it on your tongue. And man, car. I'm telling you, nothing, right nothing, nothing, nothing. Well, that'll wake you up, then. Huh? Yeah, Make nothing. Like you have a heart attack. Your coffee, or you drink it black? I drink it with. Uh, I, I now I drink it with. I, uh, sweet and low, not sweet and low, but uh, splint, not the, the other sweetener. Oh, I know what you're talking about NutraSweet. No, no, no um, the, the one. Stevia? The, huh? Well, stevia? No. Stevia. Yeah. Stevia and and uh, then I uh, do the stevia, and then I, I never used to put milk in my coffee, but then I found out later, a couple of years ago, I kind of liked it. You know? I don't know if it's okay. Kind of make it, gives it kind of a latte feeling, you know? So. I, I put some milk in there and, uh, you know, I'm good to go. You know what's good, too? If you go to Stop and Shop, the French vanilla. Sometimes I put a dab in that without the sugar. It's good. I don't like vanilla. No, me and my mother used to love that. It makes it a little sweetie like. I really don't like flavored coffees all that much unless they have a little bit of, uh, I think this one is a little bit of uh, 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 chocolate in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, yeah, they have different. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, I don't mind that. But, oh, hey, it looks like we're almost running out of time here. I just noticed. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, Amy's going to be very mad at me. Oh, wait a minute. She's not on tonight. So, okay. I can, we can keep going if you want to. Sure. Cool. Uh, 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 Friday uh, night. Huh? Overtime is a good thing. Yeah, but I, I really want to. Not for the 49ers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for the, I was I for the 49ers. Who invited <laughs> him? They said, they said, I was uh, written for, for the 49ers. Why? Why do know. 40? Why do 49er fans only only work 40 <laughs> hours a week? Why? Because they don't like overtime. <laughs> <Kevin>. Okay, <laughs> they that's don't our, like overtime. That's our sports joke for tonight, folks. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, listen. Uh, 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 I gotta, I gotta go here. Yeah. But uh, Eagles uh, don't uh, uh, Steve, thank you for joining us tonight, and please do it again. Now that you know how to do it, and now that you know how to get your sound, uh, was it just the your selection, the sound? Uh, I think it's good to go now. Yeah, yeah. cool. And, and, and uh, you know, you can call us on the Monday show too. Anyway, I'm I want thinking to... about it. Hmm? What'd you say? Uh, I said I'm, I'm giving. I'm thinking about giving that a try. Yeah, please. Anyway, I want to thank our dear friend uh, Brian for joining us tonight, and Alan, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Oh, Adrian, good night. Yeah, Adrian, isn't it time for you to go to sleep? What, what's Not with Friday her? Night. What's with her? Boy, are you going to have to rein her in when she reaches the age of nine? She just, uh, just stares at herself on the camera and she's just amazed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, have, I have a daughter too, so I know what Brian's got to look forward to. Yeah, anyway, I've warned any, you. Any, I've warned anyway. You. <laughs> Thanks, In Steve. In the teenage years. Uh, and, and thank you to, uh, to uh, uh, Tony, and thanks to uh, 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 Kevin. Uh, and go I, out and vote, because we won't be on until Tuesday, so go vote. Oh, yeah. Go oh, vote. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Yes, look at what he's got there. And good night to Adrian as well. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. There they go, folks. That's our people and there's no amy manual tonight with the uh, intersection uh however i will see you again on monday uh at our little program that we call the pop-up which will be at four o'clock and that goes out over uh our facebook page all right and then it's posted later to youtube thank you so much for joining see you tomorrow uh, see you monday same time same station in life and in the meantime as always if you see her Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.